the Rambo series. I only watched the original trilogy after the fourth movie had come out, and I had watched it in the theaters, and I was very surprised by the first movie. For anyone else who didn't grow up on these movies, did you not also think that Rambo was basically just this one-man army gunning tons of in a clear black and white action flick? When I watched the first one, I realized that this is yet another case of the original being a really good and fairly minimalistic film, and because it left so much up to the viewer's imagination, people wanted more, and so we got crappy sequels where we do see more. The first one is actually an excellent film, and a very, very important one. It shows how destructive war is to the individual, and it was made in 82, I think that was nine years after the Vietnam War ended. That's really early for such an honest and introspective film. Four minutes in, this talks about the horrors of Agent Orange, and I don't think it's humanly possible to listen to that very last monologue and not be affected. And then comes the surprisingly good pop rock song, It's a Long Road or something like that. It really fits, really hits the tone. Not overly sentimental or schlocky, just touching. The film does have excellent action and a ton of suspense. It is one of the most intense films to come out of the 80s, along with The Terminator. The interesting thing is, Rambo hardly kills anyone. I think the one confirmed kill is Galt, you know, the gun-toting madman. You know, first he tries to shoot Rambo in the middle of the street, where Dennehy rightfully points out there are people. And then the helicopter. I like how the thing that actually kills him is his own carelessness. He is so intent on shooting Rambo, who at this point has done nothing other than be disobedient, that he doesn't hold on to the chopper properly. Rambo tosses a rock at the front window of the helicopter, and the helicopter flies off. Gold falls off because he wasn't hanging on properly. Rambo maybe goes over and confirms that he is dead, but he doesn't do anything to ensure that he's dead. Throughout the film, he is neutralizing them using guerrilla methods. I love that a rock can take out a helicopter in Rambo's hands. That is the power of guerrilla combat. Don't despair, don't say, oh, I'm out of ammo or they have better weapons than me. Fight with what you got, be creative. Several of the methods he uses are what the Viet Cong used against the American troops. Like the spike trap. Everything Rambo does is just so driven. <clears throat> he always has some goal in mind, you know. Once he gets away from them for a little while, at first, he you know, walks around trying to find a good place, then he realizes this is gonna... So he finds some cloth, cuts it up, makes himself a poncho out of a piece of cloth, and that simple little rope thing. And then when he starts fighting them, and then when he starts fighting them, he's also got a little bit of camouflage going on that he simply constructed from, you know, cutting branches or whatever. And just look at how much damage he does with this one assault rifle compared to what little what nothing they do. I like how Dennehy isn't just a cardboard cutout villain. You can tell from everything he does, his idea is that if you do not do what the authority figure tells you to, you have to threaten them and possibly beat them up to get them. No convincing them, no debating with them, you just, you're in charge, they have to follow what you do. Whether it's his deputies, the weekend warriors, or the Drifter. I also love that Rambo stitches up his own wound. I can't get enough of guerrilla stuff and one man on his own against uniformity or the system, etc. We can also clearly tell that it does hurt to stitch up the wound, and in general the film is quite realistic. You know, he doesn't jump into the waterfall, he tries to find some other place to go. I watched this with my dad, who's a real stickler for realism, and he pondered why doesn't Rambo cross the water, because that would mean that the dogs couldn't track him. But I think he didn't do it because it was already cold and he wouldn't have been able to dry his clothes in time and it probably gets really cold there at night. Plus, he could handle the dogs, evidently. 
and when he's climbing, you know, he doesn't take the leap until the very last moment when he has to. Granted, maybe he shouldn't have been able to walk at all after that fall, but you could tell it messed him up. You know, and that's why he's reacting so slowly when Galt is shooting at him. He's had just about all he can take at that point. You know, a bit of time happens between him downing the helicopter and then having to run away as they shoot at him, and he only attacks Galt because he has to. He cannot get away from that tree while Galt is shooting at him. Maybe I should say at this point, I haven't actually read the novel, but I would like to. I really like the social and political issues that it raises. I mean, the movie will entertain your average moviegoer, but it'll probably also make him think, and without that taking away from the entertainment. And as he doesn't really kill anyone, certainly no one who doesn't deserve it, we can kind of enjoy him taking out all these people, and without us winding up hating them or thinking that all law enforcement officers are bad. Yes, it's a fairly violent film and disturbing, but none of it's gratuitous. Other than that, I love the reveal on Troutman. I just also really like how his first lines solidify Uncle Sam created John Rambo. This builds up Rambo very nicely, making him absolutely awesome. I mean, we see him do fairly little, but all of it he does expertly. But let's go back to the woods. The close-up of him in the mineshaft entrance with the shadow and the lighting, beautiful. And his entire trip through the mineshaft is perfect. We don't see the woods until he makes it out, so that whole trip is rendered very claustrophobic and unpleasant. You really get the sense that if he does not make it out, he will die. And when the rats attack him, everything in the film is effective. Nothing is overdone or unconvincing. Granted, there is a little bit of action flick cliché dialogue. With that said, does anyone not love those lines? If you push me, I'll give you a war you won't believe. They found Rambo's body. As a matter of fact, it stole a truck and killed two drivers. This and Rocky are really some of the only really good Sly films, I'd say. And he really acts in this. Again, I refer you to that final monologue of his. The film wastes no time. It is 90 minutes of pure intensity. That's all I had for the first one. Moving on to... Rambo 2, or really, First Blood Part 2, which doesn't really make sense. So, the film opens with a bang. Psych. The explosion wasn't really important, they're just at a rock quarry. That actually sets the tone very nicely for the rest of them dangling the opportunity of something really awesome in front of our faces, and then snatching it away and giving us something boring because we already paid for the theater ticket. So this is where the Rambo series starts to turn towards mindless action. I don't per se have a problem with mindless action. I have guilty pleasures in that particular genre. And you're not gonna hear me claiming that we don't need movies like that to just unwind with. One of the things I take issue with is turning a really important movie that happened to have action that doesn't have a modicum of the relevance or importance. But hey, maybe I could live with that if it's a good action movie. It's not. Part of the problem with this movie is that it turns it completely black and white, where the first one brought up the very important issue of how soldiers are mentally and emotionally destroyed by war, this one tries to say the reason we lost the Vietnam War was because of the pansy-ass bureaucrats back home. You know, as opposed to the fact that the US military barely grasped that this was a completely different kind of warfare. They were walking in expecting the enemy troops to come marching towards them in uniform and it would be it would be a classic war like, you know, World War Two. Oh wait, World War One. Oh wait, you know, back before World War One, about half a century ago, you know, before the fighting dirty started, back when soldiers would wear a cross around the chest to say, "Hey, here I am. Shoot me here. I don't care about dying, because I'm courageous and dying for my country is the best thing I could possibly hope for." 